Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Last time we chose to obey the Iron Code, we stayed loyal to our adoptive father's orders, and in doing so betrayed Kuro. That got us the Shura ending. Today, through magic, we're starting right before that choice, so we can walk another path. That's it. What? The the No, remember from the list obey. That's some bearer seek seek last. This time we're gonna break the Iron Code and stay loyal to Kuro. I cannot do as you ask. You... what? A shinobi showing the likes of... compassion. Unthinkable. Such a... miserable display. <sighs> Why, boy? Why can't you understand your father's will? Have you forgotten the Shinobi Code? A code must be determined by the individual. This is what I've decided. Just as my master did. Hmm. <laughs> Enough talk. Been a while since we did this. Give me your all. <laughs> oh man, my favorite part about that cutscene is actually the shadow. Uh, the shot that's just the long shadow of him drawing the sword. So I think Owl, compared to uh, the three part, or I guess two part, three phase multi-fight against Emma and Ishii and Ashina. Uh, by comparison, I think Owl is pretty easy. You do have to respect him a bit, but you can play it really slowly and safely. There's not a lot of risk involved. And uh, this boss has zero perilous attacks, too. It doesn't have a lot of ways to really go through your guard. Uh, even if he breaks your posture. I uh, can't usually punish you too well for that, even though he does do a lot of posture damage. The main thing in this phase that you have to be aware of, be aware of is that uh, if you are in the cloud when that ball hits the ground, uh, you get a status abnormality, which stops you from healing, and I think it also stops you from using an antidote. But it's so telegraphed and so slow that it's really easy to avoid it and to punish him. And then even if you want to take this really slowly and just make sure you always have posture, that's really simple to do. Oh, I love that hit, though. That impact. They have a great way of distinguishing Owl from other enemies you fight. Other, uh, humanoid, uh, not humanoid, but other enemies that you fight in these, uh, just sword duels. And it's, they give him a lot more weight because he's a much bigger enemy than, uh, anyone else you've dueled to this point. So he is a little bit slower, but he just has such a sense of impact to his moves.
anytime he uh, he has some distance from you and he throws the two shurikens one after the other, he's always going to do the somersault forward. And he doesn't track very well when he's doing that, so you can always just side dodge or even sometimes strafe uh, and get a free punish. Like here. If that is at max range, you can't strafe it. You have to sidestep. But if he does that from close up, uh, you can really just easily uh, strafe it. Wait. Wait, please. So we know Owl is not to be trusted. And we saw the two health pips. So we're going to take this opportunity to just buff up for the inevitable betrayal. <laughs> or the inevitable deception, I guess. You fool. Oh, he's tricky. So we'll either do an attack out of the, the smoke cloud. Ah, there we go. Or... He'll uh, use the cover of smoke to try to throw the uh, medicine ball at you. And most of his patterns are pretty much identical. Oh, fuck. He still has the shinobi firecracker he rarely uses. Still does that. Most of his basic sword swings are the same. That's the main thing that changes. Now he tries to poison you when he jumps back. And he does that occasionally, of course. Whoop. It's really easy to react in the medicine ball, though. And we still have resurrection pips left, so even if he does manage to land that and kill us, we'll just res and be free of the status ailment. Also, for such a big guy, uh, it's surprisingly easy to hit him out of some of his moves. He doesn't really armor through very much. He does there. Uh, but his normal sword swings, you can actually cancel him out of some of them with good timing. That's what I love about that poison attack. The poison itself is not a big deal. You can get out of the way of those puddles very quickly. But he uses the time that you take to dodge to advance far forward and do one of those really strong sweeping strikes. <laughs> oh, he's gonna use this time to lower his posture. Not much though. He's below 25%, so he's not gonna naturally regain posture over time. And he's close enough to death that we'll probably just uh, deplete his health before we deplete his posture. Could have actually, if I had reacted quicker, just sidestepped that. That's okay, though. It's not like he has that much health left anyway. That's two hits, it looks like. Huh. Might leave him with... Yeah, I was going to say, with a magic pixel. Oh, no. Oh, thank God. Even though that's not the hardest fight in the game, I do think it's really fun. Uh, the Great Shinobi Owl was foster father to the wolf. Dried aromatic wood from the Everblossom plucked by the wolf's father. The Everblossom is a Sakura tree and as such is ripe with nostalgia. Takeru would likely gaze upon this branch when once it bloomed, reminded of home. One of the incense ingredients sought by the divine air for immortal severance. Everything that we need, it would seem. Owl brought the last piece to us. 
There's one more thing to do, though, and that's to uh, sustain ourselves on his memory. The great Shinobi Owl's unbridled and ambition was to obtain the power of the dragon's heritage. Now is the time to let one's true name ring out across all of Japan. It was all for the sake of this ambition. Get another little bit of attack power boost. And we can talk to Emma and Kuro and move forward. That's the wild thing about the Shura ending, is it cuts the game off so Master abruptly. Wolf, I've found something. Here. A note written in Tomoe's soft handwriting. Lord Takeru's coughs are worsening still. Returning to the Divine Realm is hopeless, and I wish only to sever the dragon's heritage and restore his humanity. Restoration requires the Ever Blossom and Mortal Blade, and yet I cannot acquire lo uh, the latter. It was hidden by the High Priest of Senpo Temple, who has no desire to sever the immortal ties. Purification? Yes. It says here, there is a way to cut the ties of the dragon's blood and transform its owner into a regular human being. The process requires a flower from the Ever Blossom, as I told you once before. The Ever Blossom is a Sakura tree that Lord Takeru brought here from the Divine Realm. However, someone cut a branch from the tree and stole the flowers, and the Ever Blossom eventually dried and withered away. So the Ever Blossom tree has been entirely lost. If the tree itself no longer exists, the flowers don't exist either. Correct. But the branch that was stolen did have flowers on it. So if it could be found... Is this the branch from the Ever Blossom tree? It was... in my father's possession. Master Owl. But there are no flowers on this branch. Hmm. What's wrong? It's nothing. I was just trying to remember back to when the Ever Blossom still flourished. But try as I might, the memory is hazy. Uh, they're graves. What? I think I'll pay a visit to Lord Takeru and Lady Tomoe's graves. That's where the Ever Blossom once grew. Something might come back to me. The purification requires the mortal blade. I'll visit the grave. It may help me better remember. By the way, if we are to perform the purification, how would the mortal blade be used? Now that you mention it, that part wasn't very clear. I'll see what I can find. There was a dragon rot epidemic in Ashina once before. Back then, a cure was not achieved. Every single person who caught it died. I see. It is my hope that finally discovering the cure has alleviated this regret, if only a little. Lord Kuro is bound to be the divine heir of the dragon's heritage for eternity. My wish is that he could be freed of this burden and pursue a normal life. That is all I pray for. Lord Kurama, he that is Goodbye, Matt. So the problem is, our branch lacks flowers, but there might be another solution, because it at least is a branch. Now, there was an idol called the Old Grave here in the castle, and Emma said that she was going to visit Takeru's grave, so that's another lead. We'll get to that in a second. We're going to take every opportunity to do this. Wolf. I am relieved to see that you are safe. And Owl? I killed him. I am sorry. Lord Kuro. I am sorry. I did what had to be done. Wolf, thank you. My father, this was in his possession. <sighs> this branch. It's from the Ever Blossom tree? I see. So Al had it. Yes, we are a step closer to the Fountainhead Incense. Yes. Yes, that's right, Wolf. Wolf, you're back. I am. I have something for you, Lord Kuro. Something for me? Here. 
this? It's rice. Yes. The divine child of Sempo Temple told me to give this to you. She did? Then I am grateful. This looks like good rice. <laughs> Each grain glistens. It is sweet when you bite into it. Bite? Wolf, rice tastes a lot better when cooked. My lord. Hmm. So do you like sweet things? I will eat anything. Which means you don't dislike sweets then. Right. I'll make something nice for you. Something nice? <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. I'll make something nice for you. <laughs> he really is Solid Snake, isn't he? Aroma is a white flower that blooms where the fountainhead waters run deep. Yes, my lord. Not sure if we got this. I will search the sunken valley. The sunken valley is beyond the woods to the rear of the castle. There's a shrine dedicated to the white serpent deep in the woods. As the name implies, the sunken valley is just below that place. There's no proper path down there. But a man of your talent could navigate it. You're leaving, Wolf. My lord. Now this is where everything gets really interesting. Because as you can see, the game keeps going from here. And it goes for a while longer. The sure ending is really cool in that it's such a consequential choice. It leads to an immediate end. The path just cuts off early. I really love mid-game endings like that. Or endings, rather, that can be achieved in the mid-game or at some earlier juncture. Like in, kind of like in Amnesia the Dark Descent, you get like an extra 45 minutes or so of the game, depending on a choice you make near the end. I think that's really cool, rather than an ending just being like, which of these dialogue options do you choose at the very end? It just determines which cutscene you see at the end. This is really consequential stuff. Uh, so now, we can't just teleport back to the old grave idol. So I have to remember where it is, uh, so we can visit Emma at Takeru's grave. I believe that's this way. The wooden bridge down below. Uh, in fact, I think that's where we died intentionally a couple of times earlier on to get the dragon rot. Yeah, it's down here. Oh, you can see more consequences of us clearing out the way. That's essentially what we were doing unwittingly when we were going through Ashina Castle the first time, is making it that much easier for the interior ministry to invade. We really thinned out Ashina's forces and opened up a lot of routes into the castle for them to move. We just did their job for them. Cleared out generals, um, Gyobu. Just make sure I'm at the right one. Yep, this is the old grave, good. And that means that Emma should be right out here. I think there might be an eavesdropping opportunity on her right here. I don't remember. Does not look like it. Okay, let's talk to her. Uh, uh, why must that be the only way? Hello? Uh, Master Wolf, how long have you been there? Have you remembered anything? Uh, nothing, I'm afraid. Nothing? That's right. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to remember anything significant. Perhaps one of my old friends can help. I'll meet with Orangutang at his temple. Orangutang? Yes. It's the sculptor's old nickname. Back then, Lord Kenichiro and I would come here a lot. Lord Takeru would play the flute, and Lady Tomoe would dance under the Ever Blossom. It was a wonderful sight. Hmm. Perhaps one of my old friends has some. I'll speak with the right. 
The sculptor has so many connections to to monkeys. There is the flying axe, the monkey booze dialogue we got from him, where he revealed that he and his partner trained uh, in the sunken valley with the monkeys. There is the malcontent and the malcontent's ring that we got from the Shichiman warrior back in the Guardian Apes room, and the the finger whistle. Now, Emma and the sculptor are back here in the temple. We're going to sidle our way along the wall until we find an opening to eavesdrop. Emma, so that ship will with you. I can't honestly say to achieve their goal of immortal suffering, either he or Lord Kura must die. Mm. Why does that not the only way? So will you keep that from me? But a ring came. If I give this to him, he's going to die. Really feel for Emma's plight there. A true wolf would choose for himself how to use his fangs. The look on your face tells me you've done just that. I've abandoned the path of the shinobi, yet I couldn't abandon that shinobi prosthetic. No matter how hard I tried, I'd never have believed that one such as myself would save another who'd lost their arm like you have. I'm sure it is fate. Idols are all I can carve. The only Buddhas the wood shows me have faces of wrath, and I can only carve what I see. Hmm. Idols are all your heaven. Say, what? Did you know this temple is horribly drafty? Hmm. <laughs> sure Letting you know that you can eavesdrop there. A little hint. Master Wolf, you're here too. I've always enjoyed the sound of a Buddha being carved. So I stop by this place every now and then. We can confront her with what we overheard. One of us must die. Uh, what did that mean? Were you listening this whole time? Tell me. Uh, I saw it that day beneath the branches of the ever blossom tree. Lady Tomoe tried to commit suicide. Why? She said those made immortal by the oath of the dragon's heritage shackle their masters. So in order for the purification to occur, the oath-bound of the dragon's heritage must die? Yes, precisely. But she was unable to achieve the purification. Correct. She did not have the mortal blade. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose Lord Kuro, or you, but all paths are leading to dead ends. What are you hiding? Uh. So, you overheard. Tell me. What the fuck? Do what must I will live by those words, as my master does. Here. The bell charm previously owned by the owl. The owl held this bell for a long time. By the way, you can see it on his model. Offering it at the dilapidated temple may result in seeing a different memory than before. There's no way of knowing why this protective bell exists. Perhaps the owl kept it all for himself. Or perhaps he meant to give it to someone else. Is this a bell? It fell off Owl's dead body, if I'm not mistaken. You and Master Owl have a deep connection. Should you offer it to Buddha, it may be a different experience than the one you had before. I will try it. I am not sure what memories you will see, but the bell belonged to Master Owl. So please, take care. Goodbye, Master. I see you in busy car. Another pop. So this time when we pray at this statue, we will be transported again to the Hirata estate. This time we start on the stairs looking up at the burning manor. That is the courtyard in which we found Owl the first time we were here. 
that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.